All right, welcome everybody. This is going to be an advanced overview of the Carver tool. This is one of the requests I got. I'm a little behind on the tutorials, so we'll just we'll try to keep it around 15, 20 minutes uh, because it, it deserves some time. So this is a hard surface modeling tool built into Blender. You can add custom brushes, and this was one of the specific things. Hey, how do you do that? Come to the profile prefix put in anything with like an underscore. And then when you come over here, I'm just gonna A and H to hide that. And you drop in anything, cylinder, whatever you want. Uh, I've got this preset to eight, so I'm sticking with that just so I can kind of know which brush it is. I'll come over here to cylinder, and then I can type in tool underscore enter. All right, and then I'm just gonna leave it there. You can hide it, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna bring everything back and it looks like I've got this set to just a little bit too high of a scale. So I'm gonna bring it down. And this is irrelevant because you can change this once you get into the brushes. So I'm just gonna apply the scale anyways though. And doesn't matter what view you're in, just select the object you want to apply the Carver tool mod to. So shift alt, excuse me, shift control X and press B. This is gonna give you the custom brush profile. S, scale this thing down and it's going to snap very nicely all throughout here. Now you can press H for the help menu and you'll see some different things you can do with this. Uh, you can hold down control and left mouse and you can rotate this thing around in different ways, whatever you wanna do with it. And I want to cycle through these so to cycle through it's going to be w or x and if i hit x one time pretty much should work i'll be on my custom brush and then i can scale this up a little bit and this is the custom brush now something to note if you just hit the space bar now you're not going to get the proper dimension because it's got like a bounding box on it so if you hit d for depth uh, you'll get the actual boolean. Otherwise, you're gonna get like an insert button. So if I hit spacebar here, that works pretty good. But if I hit D and this is set a little too small, you're gonna get that little button in the middle of it. And you may not want that. So make sure to kind of scale this thing out to the bounds, whatever. And then you can scale the entire brush down and then hit enter. And then you'll have your custom brush. Now that's how you would do that and navigate it. But let's say you wanna do something a little bit more interesting and I'm gonna hit control three because three will bring you facing like the side or whatever and then control three will bring you the other side, the opposite same side. So now we wanna do is we wanna use the arrow seat. So you take the up arrow and you can make an array. Take the right arrow, you can make an array and I'm just gonna do something like this. Now, if you look over here, you'll see you have uh, the rows and columns, J and U. These are gonna be for spacing them. So if I hit U and go up and down, okay, that's a little sensitive. Let's bring, <laughs> let's bring that back in. I have no idea why it's being that sensitive. That's funny, but at least you can zoom in and out with the mouse, that's good. So I'm gonna try that one more time something like that and i want to lessen those rows because that's going to get into my bevel and my creased edges and now if i hit j i can kind of spread these out a little bit and if i want to make this an array and i hit my uh, rotate button there by accident but there we go now you can you can add this in as a boolean right here if you want and then you've got all those cuts at that resolution whatever you did and then control middle mouse, you can kind of come back over and like do whatever you want with these. And if we go ahead and just, let's see, if we look over here, you'll be able to see that there's a step angle and a rotation. So if you hold down left mouse, you'll get that precision turning. And if you hold down control, it'll snap to certain increments. So something like that whatever you want to do. And I can spread these out a little more over here. 
And if I hold down shift and spacebar, then I can get something like that. And I'm just going to right click out, left click out, whatever works for you. And if I wanted to, supposedly I could just mirror this, but um, I'm not sure it's gonna turn out because I wasn't really planning to do that. But I do want to try it, so there we go. If you go into edit, you'll have the auto mirror. And I want to mirror this on the Y. It looks like ne I've already done one, so negative to positive. And I've got the auto apply on. And so I can just click auto mirror. And it's going to put all that on the other side, which is cool. Uh, this thing didn't show up, right? So you'll have to mirror that to the other side as well. And once you've just got the same settings, it's just super easy. Um, so there you go. There's some beginner stuffs. Now, if you want to come back in, remember it's Control Shift X for the Carver tool. Now you can cut bullions in to your mesh very easily. You can use a rectangle and just left click and do a nice little cut. And it's all on auto apply operation. You could turn that off if you wanted to grab the bullion and do something with it. For instance, if I wanted to hit Q and not have that apply, uh, we can hit spacebar a couple of times till we get to circle. And then I'll hit W or X to bring up or down the resolution. I'm gonna stick with 90 and just left click and cut. Now I've got this here. If for some reason I wanted to add some extra geometry to it or something, now you can easily do that. It seems a little crazy to come in here and try to do all that extra stuff. You can if you want. And then I could potentially shade auto smooth on that cutter and apply. And I wouldn't want that cutter to hang around. Not that one. And that looks good. <laughs> However, there's also another option. I can just take this same view, pull the Carver tool up and go to circle, go back to 90 and do another cut in. And if you hold down alt, you can move that around, by the way, since I'm teaching everything I can about it. And you just go ahead and make sure the apply operation is on, press Q and cut it. Now you're going to see the geometry, but all you have to do is shade auto smooth again. So if for some reason you want to do it the other way, which is more old school, you can, but this is just so much easier. And so now you'll be able to make a lot of different cut-ins and the geo really isn't too bad. Like say, if you want to add something later, you can. It's not a bad idea to add some of that extra geometry for sure, uh, but you don't really have to. So this is just for basic hard surface modeling. Once you're done, you could do something like quad remesher, which I did purchase. I've got a three month subscription, which just keep renewing it. Stuff is great. Uh, it's gonna just revolutionize the way you do things. It's so much quicker. And it's not like the quad flow remesh, which is down here. If you go to the quad and use the quad flow remesh, uh, this is much more powerful and much easier to use. If you just keep the default settings and then maybe increase or decrease the count then you end up with something really nice all right so what is next you have custom things you can do as well and some of those custom things are going to be being able to cut a line and i want to auto apply so i'm leaving that on and if i want to cut out a very specific bullion here it's whatever it's going to be. Maybe it's some kind of funky little setup like that and hit space bar. And I'm bringing the lines like pretty close together. Then that actually doesn't end up looking too bad. But I do notice one little problem when you do this. And if I jump into vertex select, you'll see this funk cut angle right here. If I can get it to work, control middle mouse, come back. So what I would do is I would just turn on my auto merge. This is where it's good, you know, to learn some of this. I can merge at last or I can auto slide. And so I'm gonna hit control seven and get the butt end view here. 
I'm gonna grab this and double tap G and just slide it over and click and boom, it's on there. And now I don't have that, but I did notice that the draw feature does do that. And just to, to blah, 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 nope, nothing there. You just grab verts and hit G and shake them. If the geometry warps out or you see an extra vert under there, then you know you've got a problem. And so for the fun of it, I want to actually mirror this again. And so everything looks nice and uniform. All right, and here's one that is actually pretty cool and very useful. So if I am facing the front of my model and I put the cursor like right here and I want to cut something say from the top, I'm gonna select this and pull up just the rectangle and I just wanna like cut this little spot out. Now normally this would cut all the way through, but if I press D, as you can see down here, cursor depth will be on. Then if I go ahead and cut whatever I want, it's only going to cut down to the actual cursor uh, depth itself. And let's double tap. Yeah, see, I got a little extra here, so I'm just going to merge these in. I think we could just merge it center there. Get a couple of funky things. I think that's okay. Maybe not. What do I want to do with the... Uh, uh, so let's use the knife tool. And I wonder if I can actually hit Z on this. And there we go. And just put a little extra geo, knife tool, click, Z, lock in that access. Enter, looks good. And what I'll do is I'll actually merge. I'm gonna just slide these up. It's gonna change the hole a little bit, but whatever. Gonna get rid of all that nasty shading. So there we go, that's cool. So some things you gotta correct, but that's gonna just be standard for any models that you're making. So if you're in here and you want to create something you know, pretty abstract, you'll be able to do it, and you just realize there's gonna be a little bit of cleanup involved. But if you guys have any other questions about the Carver tool, there are a few more things you can actually do with it, but it's nothing super important. Uh, we'll go over, we'll just go over it real quick. Let's just say you're here on the top view and I wanna just bring the cursor maybe right there and I just wanna create some geometry. So this will create the geometry as well. So if I come down to H for help here. Let's say I'm just on rectangle. Let's go and let's go to circle. And this is cool actually. You should know this. So if I bring the count down to say six and click, I've now got this circle which I can move around and I can hold alt and move it. So before I'm actually going to apply this cut, um, I can move it around and get what I want out of it. Now cursor depth is still on and control will actually snap increments as well. So there's there's a few more things to go over. It's not a whole lot, but I wanna press C to create some geometry. So if I press C and then spacebar, left click, now I've got some geometry in here. And for whatever purpose, if you just wanted to make something like this, I mean, now you kind of got to turn on snap to really make that come back down properly. So you can use it as a, um, you know, potential thing. If you want to cut a bullion in, and I guess we could just move that in with snap off, select that and control minus if you got bull tool enabled, and then you can, move your boolean around but that's actually still one of those things you can do so if we bring up carver tool just real quick and i want to draw another circle out and i don't want the apply operation on and i can just cut that in so i had a different object selected there so i actually have to go back Control shift x spacebar a couple times I'm gonna bring the count back down to six. 
And then if I place this in and make sure the operation is off with Q, I'll have the live Boolean here as well. So it doesn't make sense to do it the old school way. You can just use the operators that are built in to the Carver tool. Anyways, hope that was insightful for everybody. Smash that like, smash that subscribe. Like I said, if you've got more questions, let me know. Support the channel, jump over to Patreon. You will get some free add-ons over there. And I am also on Blender Market. And if now, supporting the channel doesn't mean that you don't get anything because if you go over to Patreon, you will actually get the Hard Surface Toolbox, which is one of my favorite things. So you can come in, grab an entire folder, and it, everything, every blend file that's in here, and just hit accept. You don't have to click on anything. It's going to create categories. Those categories are going to be each one of those blend files, which is inside of there. Now, once you click on this, you'll be able to drop in the particular objects that were in the scene, or you can switch it to collection. But if I come over here and I bring in that cylinder, there's our cutter, there's some of our bulls, there's the top, and then there's the main body. So you can bring it all in, or I can switch to collection, and then you would think this would be more obvious than not, but if this is not in a collection, which it isn't, then we would want to move it to a collection and then save it. And then if I move back over to collection and want to pull that back in, then I can do that. And I'll just go back to the practice folder, bring everything in. That's now a category. I'll bring the sphere set up back and then I've got collection one and voila, everything comes in just like you'd expect. If you do join the Patreon, you will get free add-ons every month and special updates for those add-ons that will make your life much easier.